Hello and welcome back to a Method to the Madness Breaking Bad edition. This week we are covering episode three, titled Cats oh, in the Bags in the River. Yeah, is that what fucking it's called? Yeah. yeah. The one before is Cats in the Bag and the Bags in the River. Nice little uh, duology right here. Mm. So, as always, we're going to read out the plot summary and comment, it, comment on it as we go. So, yeah. yeah, Mitchie, can you take us through that, please? Yeah, all right. Uh, just as a recap, what happened last step? The fucking bath broke. Yep. Yeah. That's right. So, plot. Walt and Jesse clean up the bloody remains of Emilio while Crazy 8 regains consciousness in the basement. While talking with Walt, Crazy 8 reveals that Jesse told him and Emilio about Walt's personal life. Walt then confronts Jesse in the middle of getting high off meth, who berates him for not living up to his end of the bargain on the two and drives off. Meanwhile, Skylar tells Marie that she's working on a new short story with a stoner character in it, and she asks her about marijuana. Marie assumes that Skylar thinks Walt Jr. is smoking pot, but Skylar insists that she was just talking about her story. Marie asks Hank to scare Walter Jr. straight, leading him to bring Walt Jr. to a motel to show how meth has corroded the teeth of a prostitute. <laughs> Poor Wendy. Hank is such a cunt to her. Yeah, but f- <laughs> yeah, but she's rank. This is it. It's a, it oh, so it's justified, is it? Yeah, interesting. <laughs> one of, like, she's such a good character, and we get her introduced in this one. Such a recurring mm. character. She's she's great. I love her. Yeah, I like her little theme song later on that she gets. Does she? <laughs> yeah, there's like a montage with like a, oh, yeah, like yeah, a Wendy yeah. theme with song. The, yeah. Wendy, Wendy. Anyway. We'll, Wend- Wendy's Wendy. Yeah, <laughs> we'll get to that. Uh, this wasn't in the plot summary, but this is a brilliant opening with yep. uh, Walter and Gretchen. And oh, right. Them, yeah. yeah, them breaking down the elements of the human body. Yeah. Uh, such such a good primer, like a philosophical primer for the episode to come. Yeah, uh, and well, you know, even after that, it just cuts to them cleaning up the remains of Emilio. Yeah, but they're not very good scientists though, because clearly the other fucking point nine percent or whatever it was is just other shit that they didn't talk about. <laughs> no, you it's know. the soul, mate. What are you talking about? <laughs> also, also <laughs> the opening, even before that, the literal opening. Um, I don't think we talked about it last step, but the whole glass floor thing. That's some crazy fucking, like, cinematography, eh? You know, when, like, you, you're filming it through the floor, like, and it's oh, glass, right. yeah, and they're yeah. wiping the blood on a glass, but obviously it's a timber floor, like, and they, they started in the last step when he dumps all uh, Emilio's body into the bathtub, and, like, man, like, that is pretty fucking unique. I used that technique in my short film, actually. Really? Where'd you get your inspiration from? <laughs> uh it was original uh, you know, <laughs> i don't copy people oh, yeah. No, uh yeah yeah i love the camera techniques in breaking bad yeah it's fucking great i love this fight between walter and jesse it's yes. the first time they like physically fight which is something that happens a lot throughout the series yeah but like <laughs> jesse sitting on the toilet and walter like kicking him and but like <laughs> jesse re- deflecting his kicks with his own kicks yeah it's just such a goofy fight yeah i love it's it fucking great yeah yeah i like you know, Hank has some good intentions of informing Walter Jr. about, you know, the weed as a gateway drug. Yeah. You know, this was like, what, over like a decade old. I think it's 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 interesting, you know, especially Hank's position in the DEA. He's just like kind of weed is generally considered to be the most benign drug. And yeah. he's but, you know, he, he does have a point about it being a gateway drug, but yeah. he's completely ignorant to the way that it works of it being a an illegal drug and how that works in terms of like putting those kind of like in, intentions in people. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you got that's understandable though because he's a DA agent. He's complete. He's if anything's if anyone's going to be anti drugs, that's the kind of person that's going to be anti drugs. He has to. That's be. what I mean. It's such it's such a good like character moment. Yeah. Next paragraph. Walt phones Skylar to apologize for being late, falsely claiming that he's working over at the car wash. Skylar informs Walt that she knows he quit his job there two weeks previously and angrily tells him not to come home. Walt weighs the pros and cons of killing Crazy 8 on the toilet, then collapses on the basement floor while bringing him a sandwich, shattering the plate. After he regains consciousness, Walt tells Crazy 8 he has lung cancer. After engaging in conversation with Crazy 8 and seemingly forming a bond with him, Walt decides to let him go free. Walt goes to get the key to the bike lock, which is holding Crazy 8 captive. However, he realizes that there is a large shard missing from the broken plate, indicating that Crazy 8 obtained it while he was unconscious and plans to use it as a weapon. Walt reluctantly chokes Crazy 8 with a bike lock while he stabs backward into Walt's leg with the broken plate. 
Walt goes back home to find Skylar sitting on the bed crying. He says he has something to tell her. Meanwhile, Hank and several DEA agents discover the cook site in the desert along with Crazy Eight's car. Inside the car, they find a small bag of crystal meth cooked by Walt. The family of Native Americans shares a lab mask the young girl found in a previous episode. Okay, so that was pretty much the whole episode. Yeah, yeah. The That list, the pros and cons list that Walter's making... On the toilet, it's, which is interesting. Yeah. Why do it on the toilet? Like, they didn't need <laughs> him not? to do that. Yeah, yeah, but, but like, obviously it's a deliberate choice by the director or the producer, and it's just an interesting thing, like, to make him doing it on the toilet. It just makes him... It just fits his character even more. Like, I don't know, it just makes him seem, like, more dopey. Like, the idea that he's wearing his underwear in the first episode... And that kind of carries on that kind of attitude. Is he using the toilet while he's making that list? Yeah, his pants are down. He's chucking his oh, shit. I didn't notice that. I just thought he was just sitting on it. Just It's just a such a strange to thing to do. Like, you'd think naturally if you're filming it, you'd be like, he's just sitting at a table in, like, the living room or something. But no, they specifically made the choice of him chucking his shit while he's doing it. And you don't realize until after he kind of finishes the list, which, and it's just, like, the last clip of that scene, like... It's it's just interesting, like little things like that, like it's deliberate and then you kind of think about why they would do that and, and these little nuances, like it, it builds Walt's character, you know, like even though everyone shits, the fact that they chose to show him shitting while he's writing his list, it just fits Walt's character more. It's just interesting. That is very actually very interesting because I yeah. feel like a lot of um, insights happen when you're on the dunny, you know, like <laughs> that, that, yeah, that's true. when your best ideas come to you. Yeah. Yeah. That maybe that's why too. Yeah. Yeah. Um. He's very reasonable in his pros and cons. Like, he, in his cons, he's writing, like, it's it's immoral. What what else does he write? Like, it's it'll change, it'll forever irreversibly change you as a person or something. Yeah. Like, it's it's morally wrong. You know, like, very, very reasonable, clear-headed stuff. Yeah. And then it's such a good pan to the pros list where yeah. it, there's only one point, which is he'll come back and murder your entire family. And it's like, which well, fuck. completely fuck. fucking valid. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't really yeah. have a choice, does he? Like, Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, man, such such a good deliberation scene. Yeah, it is good. So I, fi- I found it very interesting, um, Domingo, Crazy Eight's real name. Yeah. Uh, he sort of, he realizes that Walt is trying to make a connection with him even before he sits down with the beers. Yeah. And it seems like he's sort of playing hard to get, but subtly letting Walt believe that he is getting to him on an emotional level. Yeah. And he, he's he's pretty much like playing a character, you know? Yeah. Um, he's playing Walt, yeah. And then as it goes on, he seems to actually form a bit of a genuine connection with Walt. Yeah, it's it's pretty convincing. Uh, uh, Crazy yeah. Eight is, um, as a character, is quite compelling. He's, he seems like a very intelligent bloke, actually, like not like mm. a dumb kind of drug dealer on the street kind of guy, like uh, Skinny Pete or something. And yeah, like you, you like especially as a, if you're watching this for the very first time, you actually have no idea what to expect. And, you know, that whole plate thing, man, it's just such good writing. Like mm. just to think of that, like just think about it, like you're writing this plot, right, this story, and he falls over because of his lung cancer, which shatters the plate. And then that allows Crazy Eight to get a weapon, which he discovers and then eventually leads to his death. Everything's so kind of like, it flows so well. Everything is perfectly linked. And and this happens time and time again in Breaking Bad. And that's why I think it is one of the best TV shows ever. There's just no loose sense. Literally everything has a reason. Like, yeah. he fell over for that purpose. Like, it's it just does. fucking great. Yeah, this show has an incredible flow. Yeah, it's it's, it's sort of like it's like in the first episode when Amelia was arrested, and then it turns out that he is Crazy Eight's cousin, which leads to the whole altercation between with Walter and that because Jesse was the one cooking with him. It's like again, like not some they could have picked some random bloke that had nothing to do with the story to be arrested during that drug raid, but they picked Amelia, mm-hmm. which is related to it all. It's just everything's linked. It's just perfect. Exactly what I was talking about, man, in the in the prelude episode. It's so good. And speaking of, how he finds out that the shard is missing, he opens yeah. the uh, bin for a second and he looks, throws something away, yeah. and then he's like, wait a minute. You, and I, I notice this time that the he looks at the plate for a second, and I think be, the reason he, or like, he realizes there's a fraction of the plate missing, which is a callback to the beginning of the episode when yeah. he's calculating the elements of the human body and he realizes, wait, we still have this percent missing. So it, right. it's it's like a callback to his astuteness of um, yeah okay yeah yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 like his attention to detail that's yes, actually exactly. a good point yeah I thought that was pretty clever and and what I what I find interesting is is that that whole thing so you don't know what Crazy Eight's intention is right like 
Okay, like up until he finds a broken shard missing, you have no idea what his intention is. Then he finds mm. a broken shard missing, but you could still justify Crazy Eight for doing that, right? Like he's held captive yeah. in the basement, gonna die. Like he needs something to defend himself, right? And then, but the interesting thing is, is that just as uh, he's about to unlock him, and then he says, "Oh, are you gonna, or are you just gonna stab me with that broken shard of plate?" And then the whole he starts choking him. There's a quick shot where Crazy Eight like sort of almost brandishes that plate piece which totally changed your opinion of him and you realize that his intention was to just kill Walt as soon as he was released but yeah you don't actually know that like what if they never showed that piece of plate then there's a bit of uncertainty there it's like oh well crazy Eight maybe just took that piece of maybe he really was just gonna leave and leave him alone you know maybe because you, you do feel like he's pretty genuine and if they didn't show that piece and Walt just went ahead and killed him, then Walt would have been the bad person in to some degree because he's the one that just kills this guy for no reason. But because we just have this split second where we see the piece of plate and he looks like he's going to grab it, then everything seems completely justified. And it's amazing mm -hmm. how, you know, you just add a little second like that and it changes your whole opinion of the whole situation. It does. I love how that flips pretty immediately because when he goes back down after discovering that the piece of plate is missing, yeah, you can, you, like... Domingo's demeanor is kind of different. Yeah, um, yeah. He, he it's kind of more manipulative, and he turns around. Walter's deliberating, and then he's like, "Come on, Walter, unlock me." Yeah, you know, he's like kind of in a rush to get out. Yeah, um, yeah. And it's a brutal death. Holy shit. <laughs> yeah. Like yeah. fucking hell, and he's just choking <laughs> out like that, and then his arms just mechanically moving, trying to stab him. By the end of it, you know. Yeah, oh. that that dude was really good at acting like he was dying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yep. And, <laughs> Yeah, like his eyes were like bulging out and red. And yeah, shit. yeah, it was kind of fucked up. Uh, props to the makeup team. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I had written down here, like, you know, would he had let him, if he had let him go, would he have come back and killed his family? We'll never yeah. know. But it's, yeah, yeah. As, it seems like he would have killed Walt, probably. Yeah. Maybe not his yeah, family. Yeah, given that shot by that shot, probably. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I love, you know, again, with the, uh, the themes of like universality in the show, uh, when he's talking about how they possibly might have like met once when he was working at the store and was well, like, huh, small world. It's yeah. Such a poignant moment. I love that. I know. Just again, like linking everything together. Yeah. 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 And then finally, uh, I, is it, no, it's, it's not the, it's not the last bit, uh, not the last scene, but you know how it goes back to Walter and Gretchen mm. and then Gretchen's like, well, yeah, what about the soul? And then Walter's mm. like, oh, the soul. And then he leans over and he says, there's, a, there's nothing but chemistry here. Yeah, yeah, such yeah. a good line <laughs> such a good line fuck me yeah <laughs> oh. such a nerdy fucking chemist line but <laughs> yeah oh it's so good yeah uh yeah uh that's about it for me yeah me too cool yeah sweet all righty uh thanks for listening and join us next episode boy i don't know it just it just doesn't it seem like something's missing what about the soul? <laughs> the soul. There's nothing but chemistry here. If you like this series, Mitch is going to tell you where you can find more of these. Yep, so you can find us on Spotify, YouTube, iTunes, SoundCloud, or Stitcher. And we've also got a website, amttm.com, where you can find our fabulous episodes on Breaking Bad. If you have any questions, queries, insights, or criticism, you can send them to mail at amttm.com. And as always, thank you for listening. <laughs>